What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That, of course, is the slack-jawed, never-participating Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis, and we're back with another one. Yeah, we're actually running one back that didn't go so well the other night, and thankfully, he's kind enough to join us again. Man, we're going to get this thing done tonight. Suleiman, we got you? Yeah, I got you guys. How are you? Oh, man, awesome. And I'm glad we finally got a chance to do this, man, because obviously, man, you know, our, our audience doesn't know, man, but we did attempt to do this the other day when you were on your way back from the gym. You were kind enough to a attempt to do it. And, you know, I mean, technology being what it is, we obviously, you know, we had some connection uh, errors or whatever, but I'm glad we finally got a chance to do this, man. And, uh, you know, as I was saying, you know, we didn't record the episode, but I, I know I, I kicked it off the last time by congratulating you on that amazing performance against uh, 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 Ruben Villa, man. So, again, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that like uh, – uh, uh, out of all your fights uh, so far, and you had a lot of amateur fights too, you know, would you say that that was uh, uh, one of, if not the biggest moments in your career uh, up to this point, professionally at least? Yeah, professionally it was one of the biggest moments, but I've had big, bigger stages I've been on, which are like that. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, uh, you, you know, you grew up in, uh, how, how long did you spend in, uh, in, over in, in Uganda before you came here? I was born and raised in Uganda. Okay. And, and you spent how much of your childhood there? So I think, I, uh, let me see, I left Uganda when I was 22. Oh, okay. So you spent yeah. a lot of your life there. Yeah, yeah. And so how do you get into boxing when you're over there? Uh, 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 how do you find your way to the sport? So, like, uh, basically, I grew up in the gym. Yeah. So the gym was my playground. Okay. So by the age of six, I had, you know, I had people who we used to live with in the neighborhood. I used to follow them to the gym. So yeah. at first I was playing in the gym. It was my playground. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't doing boxing yeah. until I was like 13. Yeah. That's when I started hitting the bug a little bit. But I started when I was like seven, going to the gym all the time, back and forth. Were you somebody that was getting in a lot of street fights? Did you fight a lot of other kids? Nah, nah, nah. No? Good kid, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm blanking on his name now, but I know Duke Mike have brought him up a lot of times, but not, now I'm going to blank on his name because I'm asking you. But I was going to ask you about, like, idols in the sport growing up, like who, who you kind of, like, looked up to. But I know there was guys like Francis Ngannou, or uh, Francis Ngannou, uh, yeah. Mike Bayabuchi. And yeah, now, so actually I grew up, you know, looking up to guys who are in the U.S. Okay. Because the people who used to train me by that time, they used to talk of a guy called Mugabe John the Beast. John Mugabe, those, sure. Those are eras of the 80s. Yes. So in the 80s, they used to talk about Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray. Yeah. So I used to look up to those people. So those are the people I grew up looking up to because I knew they were great, especially Marvin Hagler. My trainer used to love him. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I mean, easily one of the all-time greats. A legend, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, rest in yeah. peace. The great, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Sure. Man. And, 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 and he was one of those guys who just, like, you, you know, stayed at middleweight and just, like, just kept cleaning that division out. That's that old-school yeah. mentality, you know? Just, yeah, yeah. You know, keep staying there and just keep reigning for a long time, you know? Sure. Uh, but it seemed like back in the 80s, those guys really didn't jump around to a lot of weight divisions the way guys do now. Who was true, that, true. Who was that guy, though, that Duke Micah kept bringing up? Now I'm blanking on his name. I don't know. The African fighter. Oh, no, I think you're talking about Anzuma. Yeah. Anzuma Nelson. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah the professor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, actually, guess what? I got to know about Anzuma when I came in the U.S. I didn't know about Anzuma. Yeah. And yeah, and, I didn't know about him. Yeah. And so, so, um, uh, 240 amateur bouts, though. That's a lot of experience, uh, you, you, you know, before turning pro. That's a lot of amateur fights. Yeah. Yeah. Was it easy to get amateur fights over uh, in Uganda? I'm assuming most of these took place in Uganda. Yeah, yeah, most of them took place in Uganda. It was very easy over there. Because, every like, every after two months, we would have tournaments. Yeah. everybody. So we have tournaments in Uganda, starting from the beginners to schools to juniors, novice, intermediate, then we go to the elite. Okay, okay. Yeah. And... And now that you're here in the States and you're an actual professional boxer, when you look around at other guys that are doing it right now, you know, from a fan standpoint, who, you know, who do you enjoy watching? 
so basically i enjoy most people most new i enjoy a lot of new boxers but i, I won't call terence crawford a new fighter he's kind of in between yeah. old and new but those you know those are people i love watching i love w watching bad crawford mm -hmm. yeah i yeah. love watching him a lot yeah we hear his name a lot and, and 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 he's got a fight coming up here soon yeah yeah he has a fight coming is it august on the 8th something third. like that yeah, oh, yeah. Third. august 3rd yeah 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 I mean, no one's gonna beat him, though. He's not gonna. Boxing is boxing. Fight. I know he'll beat him, but yeah, you never know. But to be to be eleven and ten and oh, to face somebody who is forty, it means you have a lot of backup. You know, you yeah. have something that's backing you up. Yeah. Is that ever in the back? Go ahead, Benji's. No, man. I was just gonna say, Majumov looks good and ready. You know, I mean, I don't think he's gonna beat Bud, but he looks good. He looks ready. Yeah, he does. Okay. Yeah, he does look good. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, um. We just saw one of these the other night, uh, and, and I'm interested to have your take on it uh, and, and, and see how you approach it. When you see these Jake Paul type fights, you know, yeah, these, yeah. YouTube, these YouTube fights, I know a yeah. lot of people come on this show and they say, you yeah. know, they do bring eyes to the sport, you know what I mean? But do you yeah, like yeah. these kind of spectacles or do you think they're good for boxing, not good for boxing? They're good for boxing. Very good. good. For it. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they bring, you know, like a certain kind of, you know, like funds. Yeah. Who know nothing about boxing, you know? So they gotta do their thing, man. Whatever they're doing, I love it seriously. I got. Okay. I love them boys. Yeah, because whatever they're doing for the sports, they're giving it more publicity to people yeah. who didn't know nothing about the game. I got. I gotta say though, being being a part of all these boxing groups on Facebook and this and yeah. that, I gotta say you you're right about it's bringing eyes of people who don't know anything about boxing, but. Yeah. A, that's a problem because now these people that don't know anything about boxing are trying to yeah. kill boxing. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but guess what? Uh, is it Jake? They're getting better. He's getting better every now and then. I agree. Yeah. Every now and then he's getting better. You might see him swinging, yes, but still he's getting better. Yeah. Meaning he's putting in the work. So that we should give him credit. He is fighting cans, though. He is fighting some tomato cans. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's a fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're right there you go yeah <laughs> and now speaking of uh like opponents though i mean uh 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 you know you, you you've been in the ring with uh uh you know some really good ones in your division uh, yeah. uh i'm interested to get your take on some of the guys that are uh you, you know uh, uh at your division uh you know right now uh you know even just like a little blurb or like what you think of them as a fighter uh in the featherweight division uh what mm. about a guy like shushu carrington are they're you a great fan? Boxer. They're great fighters. Shushu is a great fighter. Yeah, we've had him on. They're, he's a great yeah. kid too. He's a great fighter. They, you know, his skills are on another level. You know, he's hungry. He wants it, which yeah. is good. So, I know he's good. Seriously, he's good. What, what about? Uh, go ahead, Benji's. What do you make about Inoue? Inoue. Inoue is one twenty six. He's also a monster. Yeah, he's a monster. Yeah. Is he beatable though? He's beatable. Everybody's beatable. It just yeah. depends on who you fight. I mean, he did look human in that last fight when he actually hit the canvas. That I think yeah, that's when, surprised. Hey, but but he, the way he came back, you know, it was um, tremendous. Such a exactly, it was such of another level. So you know, we gotta give credit to them. You know. And by the way, Benji's, you may not know this man, but a guy that we've had on the show, uh, our friend here, uh, Mr. Sagawa, has actually beat Elijah Pierce. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've had Elijah on. We've had Elijah on the show, and that is, uh, you, you know, you did defeat him a few years back. Yeah, yeah, but I think Elijah say he was coming from a lower way to catch up with a big way. Yeah, so it's yeah. understandable. But sometimes when you know, yeah, you meet somebody who is bigger. Are you somebody that likes? To, are you somebody that likes to walk around? You know, pretty close to your fighting weight, or are you somebody that always? Has to, always? always. Yeah, because I don't want to, you know, struggle trying to make the weight. Yeah. Actually, I came in less on the way on the way again. I came in at 122. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That's a lot of low strength. Yeah. Because the max was 126, but I came in at 122. I'm like, yeah. come on. Yeah. Why do you feel like you feel like that was not a good strategy? No, that was a good strategy, but I think I stressed too much on the weight. Yeah. But yet I was around the weight all the time. After that, after you make the weight at 122 and you know you got room to play, you know what I mean? Do you do you yeah well up nice yeah yeah i do that yeah yeah got to get the rehydration in right true that's important yeah. that's important now um uh now uh, first of all i love what you did i and and 
I don't know why people were so surprised, man, but you know, you really took that fight and kept it in the center of the ring against Vila. And I really like what you did. You were really there in the pocket all night long and you were just yeah. killing them with those uppercuts, man. Jesus Christ. Killing them. Yeah, people were surprised because I think they had written me off. Because you know, when you see somebody having four losses, but they don't realize that all of those four losses, it's only one they that they saw on TV. The rest have never seen them. Right, right. And yeah, I saw so some and it's yeah, not like they're ahead. losses that you hang your head about either. You know what I mean? Like you're getting beat by like, you know, other elite fighters, you know? Exactly. But still, you know, there's some fights which are like, I lost, but I was like, uh-uh, this one. Yeah. Is but it yeah. is what it is. You know, sometimes you got to admit that it is what it is. Yeah. But I mean, but, but, but what I mean, somehow Lomachenko managed to stay on the pound for pound list for a long time when he had two and even three losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, but I think with him, it depends on the people that you work with. Because when it comes to boxing, it's not about how great you are, but it's about who do you know. Right. And we're always trying yeah. to figure out the ranking system, too, because, you know, you're talking about guys with three or four losses. But then we've yeah. had guys on here that have unblemished records, good, hungry, young, up-and-coming fighters, and they're not ranked. But there are guys, you, you, you know, ranked by the alphabet organizations in the top ten that have three and four losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably I think we depends gave, I think on their back. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. It just depends, maybe on their back. You know, on their back fights. Maybe they would have had some tough fights, and people they had fights with, they might have become champions. That's yeah. why they keep them in there. You know, so they have a lot of technical things going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much technicality. I think. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now, do you get worried at all because we do see? Uh, you know, I, I, like obviously, you know, when you fought uh, the last fight against Ruben Villa, it was obviously a, a, a crowd that was, you know, it seemed like they were pulling for him. You know, what I mean, it seemed like sure. hostile territory for you. And yeah. given the fact that boxing still gives us a lot of awful, awful decisions and terrible scorecards, is that yeah. anything when you go into the fight that kind of like weighs on your mind at all? Yeah, it weighs on your mind. But one thing you have to know is sometimes you just have to go with a mindset that I have to win every round. Yeah. So that at least the judges, even if they had to do something, at least they would call it a draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but have... we don't all see that, though, Suleiman, because we saw Oshaki Foster win every round except maybe one, and they still gave it to the other guy. Robbed him. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that in New Jersey, but I don't know, man. It that depends. It just sometimes it depends. It depends. It's frustrating, yeah. though. It's frustrating. It's frustrating. It it's frustrating in the sense that, you know, the boxing it always seems like they're like jockeying with all the other sports to try to pull people back to loving it. And then when yeah. there's, when we, you know, when stuff like that happens, it, it leaves fans kind of scratching their head with, and with, with a bad taste in their mouth, you know? True, true. But I don't know, man. But, but I feel as if people, the more these people have come in, because I saw that shake of, you know, like, is it Saudi Arabia? Yeah. He's trying to put in more money into other promotions. So I, I feel as if he wants to make the best fights. Yeah. Because for him, he wants the best to fight the best. So I think they might end up, you know, changing. I don't know. Yeah, I hope. I actually kind of hope Turkey Allah Sheikh does kind of buy. I hope he can figure out a way to buy all these different promoters out and make a sort of like a boxing league. Like you know, if he buys them out, then also those promoters won't have, you know, what to do. So I feel as if he should just work with them instead of buying them out. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes it's should be on that top, none. like maybe giving them what to do, telling them what to do, but not buying them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And one good thing about you though about being able to walk around at your fighting weight is that like you also work as a personal trainer, correct? True, correct. That's a nice advantage. Yeah, yeah, true. You're always <laughs> staying in shape. Do you That's do, it. Enjoy, do you enjoy seeing people get their gains? You know what I'm saying? Like do you enjoy watching your clientele get to their goals? Exactly, cuz as they get their goals, I'm also, you know, teaching myself at the same time. Right. Yeah. 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 And and uh what about like your own personal uh uh you know your own personal uh you know as far as like changing like weight divisions for yourself do you feel like uh, you, uh, you you know you fought it feather you fought it super feather you you even gone up to lightweight Yeah yeah you know that affected me you know it affected me cuz you know I had to go through a lot of people who are stronger than me Yeah and yeah. one thing I knew is that people who make like those kind of bigger weights they come all the way from bigger, bigger weights to make those weights. And I'm like, because I thought that you just walk in a weight and just fight in the nah. People have to go into like dehydrating their body to make those weights. And I was like, whoa, yeah. 
Now, when you see those rehydration clauses, you know, obviously we see Tank Davis has really implemented them a lot. Are you in yeah. favor of those? It depends. It depends. There's some people who come, you know, all the way from up. So I think that that might be a good thing for people not to go beyond the weight, even if they are to, you know, like try to rehydrate their body. Yeah. There is a certain, you know, weight you shouldn't exceed. Yeah. You got guys coming in there like that are huge, you know, well, your advantage. Exactly. Devin Haney a lot. He comes in at 140 and then swells the 170. Yeah. It's crazy. It's I know. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so obviously, you know, you just beat the, the, the you, you know, the number one ranked guy in the WBC, you know, uh, uh, are you and your team talking about what comes next? Like what opportunities this is going to uh, afford you? Cause this is obviously like uh, a good springboard into some uh, potentially bigger fights. It is, it is. Cause I feel as if I think my manager top rank reached out to him. He reached out to top rank and, you know, I think they told him, yeah, they might, you know, give him another fight so he's still waiting on to that but well as we also have our own connections going on in the dmv area in dc yeah so we are waiting for them to give us the green light if they can't give us the fight that we need then we can we might end up you know defending it ourselves this side yeah is that, is that something that when when top rank tells you uh we'll give them you know maybe we'll give them another opportunity is that something that makes you go into a fight with that edge, knowing they don't think I'm going to win, but I got to go in there and take another one. Yeah. When it comes that I'm fighting their fighter, you know, that gives me that. Yeah. If I'm fighting a fighter who is under their level. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, if we can dig a little personal, you know, and get into some of the fun things about your life after you've made weight, yeah. and you've already, and you've already completed the fight immediately after the fight, what's the go-to food? Immediately after the fight, you've made weight, you've won the Actually, fight. Imme immediately after the fight, I'm not even hungry. Okay. I just feel as if I should drink something. Okay. So <laughs> remember when you're in the fight, you lose a lot of sweat and salt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I feel as if I just have to, you know, like rehydrate my body. Then after that, I usually go back to my room. I don't do after parties. I just go back to my room after drinking something and I chill. And what would you like to eat, though, preferably? Like, what is a typical, like, you know, you know, after you have had the fight, like, what's the first meal now, like, you don't have to make weight? Like, what do you particularly like to go to? I usually do something light, like a fruit. If I have a mango, I, I'll do a whole mango or a watermelon. Boy, you are disciplined. Jesus, <laughs> yeah. man. We hear yeah. guys on here talking about demolishing whole pizzas. <laughs> no, 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 I don't usually do that. <laughs> yeah. personal trainer. That wouldn't make you a very good personal trainer, though. <laughs> Tell people that you're crushing a whole pizza after a fight. <laughs> now that we're talking about food, going back to Uganda and Africa, what, yeah. like, what's the food of Uganda? Is it fufu? Nah, Uganda, Uganda. So I think fufu, fufu, I don't know what they mix, but we have it, but we don't call it fufu. No. Okay. Yeah, we call it different name because we are on the eastern side. Okay. Right? And fufu, it's more on the west. It's like right. west coast and east coast, yeah. Okay, so if we were planning a trip and we were going to where you're from and you could recommend us one of your native dishes to try when we went there, what would you tell us that we have to try when we're there? So I would tell you to try bananas because, you know, we eat a lot of bananas, green bananas. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of fish, seafood. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we do chicken as well. Their beef is also more organic. So there is plenty of things to do, but I will recommend like bananas, green bananas. Not really out of the ordinary then. Right. What? I said nothing really out of the ordinary then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just regular, yeah. I mean, it, 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 now what's the deal with a green banana? Does a green banana taste better than a yellow banana? No, so the green banana actually doesn't even have a test. Okay. Huh. Yeah, it's like what? It's tasteless. It doesn't have a test. Okay. But I grew up on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it's a dish that I love. Even here in the U.S., I eat it. I go to, you know, like Atlantic supermarkets. Yeah. They sell it. Then I bring it to my house. My wife prepares it. I usually eat it all the time here. Now, when you say prepare it, what do you typically do with it? Right. So basically they steam it. Steam it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Cause I'm thinking like when like the, uh, you know, Latino people like make like plantains, you know, they cut the bananas up and then they yeah. fry them. Yeah. The other one, no, no, the green one, they don't make it like that. You just steam it within like, 20 minutes, it's already, it's already ready. 
So it's like so it's like soft inside the rind or yeah it gets softer but it's not sweet like the plantain right it's just tasteless it doesn't have a taste now you, you, uh, you, you know you are probably what most most athletes would consider the prime of your career you know correct me if I'm wrong but you're 33 years old right now like that's usually yeah. the you know the uh, the prime years for an athlete have you thought yeah. about like after you after you stop actively fighting do you feel like you're somebody that will always uh, always uh, be active in boxing like have you thought about after your career you know training or promoting or anything like that or do you think when you're yeah, after fighting, my career I just think about again training that's it that's why I'm I'm already a personal trainer, so that's the transition. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, to, go ahead, Benji's. No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you for the rest of 2024. Uh, how, like, I, how much more would you be before the, your voice is getting broken up bad? Yeah. How much? How much more active would you like to be before the year is up? Before the year is up, probably I think I still have like four more years under my belt. No, but I mean, like, before this year is over, how many more times would you like to fight? Right. Like, twice? Yeah. Okay, so you'd like to get two more fights in? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, is there anybody in particular or just whatever they bring to the table? Whatever they bring to the table, which is going to be in the... Because I think once the WBC does the rankings, I might end up being in the top 10. That's what I'm thinking. Because they do it every, every first month. Yeah. Sorry, every month they do it once. I mean, for God's sakes, especially the WBC, man, they almost have to rank now. You just beat their number one guy. I mean, exactly. So uh, I'm expecting them to put me in the top 10. So probably I might be going for oh, everybody who is in the top, from top 10 to top 20. Yeah. Yeah. I also like the fact that you really looked like in there that you were very exuberant. Like you really looked like you were really enjoying yourself in that last fight. You were yeah, having yeah. time in there. I was because I didn't want to put on an expression that I'm tired, but deep in me, yeah, a lot yeah. was going on, but sometimes you know you gotta fake the, you gotta put on the face. Yeah, you did, man. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I, obviously, we just alluded to it earlier, though. You know, you did know that you're in there, uh, you know, uh, against kind of in, in a hostile environment. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which so, uh, no, no. The biggest question of the night, bots. We gotta ask Suleiman, man. All time. You're Top four. It's the Mount Rushmore in the United States. Got the four presidents' heads on there. We always go for the top four all-time fighters for you. Your for four. Me. Your four. Oh. Yeah. All oh, time. Four. All time. Yeah. Because uh... Mount Rushmore's got what? George Washington and Abraham Lincoln or whatever they got. Whoever the hell's on there. I, I, what, what kind of Americans are we? We don't even know who the hell's on Mount Rushmore. But we know there's yeah. four faces. That we do know. Four faces. All-time presidents. No, all-time boxers for you. Oh, boxers? Yeah. You I think uh, Sugar Ray will go on first. Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Okay. Marvin Hagler will go on second. Okay. Uh, there is a guy that ties on fold. What's his name? Holyfield? No, no, no. Lennox? No, there is, no, there is a guy who, is, who used to fight like Tyson. I think he fought with Mom. Muhammad Ali, he used to move like this. A heavyweight? A heavyweight, yeah. I'm not sure. An older heavyweight, like from years ago? From years ago. That's where I think Mike Tyson got the style. Jack Johnson? Nah, nah. Oh, now he's if got I, us on the, now yeah, he's got he's us on the ropes. Yeah, 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 what's his name? Come on, I have the name. I think he fought George Foreman as well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier and four Foreman. There you go. There you go. Oh, okay. Oh, those are my four. Yeah, okay. all time. Oh, so you got George Foreman on there too? Yeah, yeah. Big George. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good for you. Go with like a lot of the bigger guys. Man, there's some bigger guys who got skills and got hats. So those people were on yeah. a different era. Yeah, their era is totally different. Now, obviously, if you've got Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvelous Marvin Hagler on your Mount yeah. Rushmore, you must be aware, uh, even though you are 33 years old, you must be aware that back in 1987, those two gentlemen fought each other, Sugar Ray Leonard yeah, and Marvin Hagler. Yeah, I saw the Hagler. fight, and I usually see it over and over again. Okay, so okay, so being as, I'm glad you said that, Suleiman. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Who won that fight then, in your opinion? Yeah, in my opinion, Sugar Ray won it, but guess what? My trainer used to tell me that Marvin Hagler won it. He didn't want to hear nothing. 
It's still a very polarizing. You'd be surprised, Lamont. It's still a very polarizing decision. I know. And still, I can see. By the way, Sid, Sugar Ray got all the moments. Marvin Hagler was coming for a kill. Yeah. But Sugar Ray was smart enough to move and let those hands go. Yeah. And they were landing. So you can't deny the win from him. Though Marvin Hagler did what he had to do. But he yeah. was not touching him. Mo I'm Sugar not I'm not going to argue with you. I've watched yeah. it a million times, and I come up with yeah. 115, 113 Leonard yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't even go in the score. I just look at it, playing yeah. the whole fight. Sugar Ray touched Marvin Hagler more than Marvin Hagler touched Sugar Ray. So that alone explains everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we, to me, not to everybody, but to me. Right. Discussed this so many times, Sula, Sulma. Me and, because that's my dad. Me and my dad have yeah. a million times. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. yeah. And. When Sugar Ray's moving, he's yeah. moving, he's moving around a lot. But when he yeah. he and trades with Hagler, he beats yeah. him those moments too. Yeah, true, true. They were exchanging yeah. on Marvin Hagler punches were stronger, but yeah. Sugar Ray did a lot. He did and a plus, lot. And plus, Sugar Ray Leonard is a master at like when he hears the clacker, he knows how to steal those rounds at the end. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, he leaves those judges. He leaves those judges. You know, re remembering him at the end of the round. You know. Sure. Yeah, he's not, and, and as you said, he's not necessarily hitting you with the hardest stuff, but he's touching yeah. you. you he's know? touching you exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's touching you a lot. So, so what is it about? Uh, 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 you know, if you pick one of those guys off your Mount Rushmore, you know, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned Sugar Ray Leonard. He was the first guy that you said. What was it about him? Like, uh, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about a lot of great things that he does, but like, why was he like your favorite guy though? Like, what is it about him? Just the whole package, the personality, everything. Everything the way he, he was reminds moving. me a lot of you. He does. Yeah. I, I, I can see the yeah. influence. Yeah, the movement, the yeah. reaction, the way he was setting up his combos. Yeah, everything. Yeah. 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 And by the way, his autobiography, an amazing book. I would recommend it to anybody out there. An amazing okay, book. I'll, I'll look. I'll look out for it. I'll and look especially, for it. and especially Suleiman, you got to get the audio book version because it's read by Sugar Ray Leonard himself. So it's, okay. basically, it's basically like sitting there and having Sugar Ray Leonard tell you his life story, which is amazing. Actually, actually I have to get it. Thank you for even mentioning it. Because, you know, me and him, we follow each other on IG. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, it's great, and it's great when yeah. somebody writes their life story and then they narrate yeah. their own audio book because only they can really explain their story. Exactly. You know? That story. You're right. Yeah. Well, yeah. so listen, man, I would have to say, man, that some type of title shot has got to be, uh, you know, coming up in your near future. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, for, for sure, but I just have to keep working harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know there's a lot of competition out there, too. It's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot of young prospects coming every now and then. Yeah. So the sport is changing. Boxers are coming every now and then. Well, yeah. listen, I was... I, I gotta say, man, I, I mean, you're a great fighter, and you're doing your thing right now, but yeah. you actually got to be one of the humblest guys we've had on this show. Oh, yeah. thank you, man. I appreciate that. But, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you are very humble, and I think that actually helps, man, because a lot of boxers will say, you know, you've got to have this uh, this air of arrogance or bravado, and 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 I do think that you inside, you you know, you, you know, you probably feel like you're un, uh, you're, you you know, you can't be beat because you have to have that mentality. Exactly. You have to think, yeah. you have to think you're going to beat every man that they put. Every, in front exactly. Of you. True. You know, but there's certainly nothing wrong with uh, you, 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 you know talking and 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 portraying yourself with some humility. You know. True. You're right. You know, it's good. It, it's certainly good character traits. L l l listen, I'm glad we finally got a chance to do this. I'm so glad that you were so cool working with us. I'm sorry that it didn't work out the other night in the car. That's all good. You know, I in mean, life things happen, you know. Obviously, we want to have the best representation of you because obviously, you know, people back in your country will obviously, you know, be happy to see this interview. And and obviously, yeah. you know, we want people to be able to see you and hear you clearly. So it really means a lot to us to have you come back on and, and actually have us do it the right way. So we appreciate you. Anytime, you. anytime you invite me out, you know, I'll just pull up. Yeah, we appreciate that, man. Uh, that's that's usually how we end these. We usually make sure that we, we that we yeah. stay in touch, and we'd love to have you back on. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that, man. Thank we you. We really appreciate you coming on here, Suleiman. Thanks a lot, and My again, man. congratulations, man. That was a wonderful performance thank you. the other night. Yeah. Thank you, Rex. Thank you, Bendis. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate right. you. All right, my man. Have a good one, guys. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thank you. All right. I tell you what, man, that guy just came off a masterful performance, man. Shout out Suleiman Sagawa, man. If you go back and watch uh, the work that he put in against Ruben Villa, the number one ranked at the time by the WBC featherweight. And, uh,
I don't want to say he made easy work out of him, man, but he looked like he was having a good time in there, man, putting hands on Ruben Villa, man, and and kept it in the center of the ring. It was just piecing him up with uppercuts from all kinds of different directions and angles. But, man, I wasn't just saying that, man. That dude was humble. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Oh. Hi, man. Well, I've been following. I've been following him for a while, and I guess you know, uh, you, you, you know, you, you you could tell how humble he was because he's mentioning like you know, yeah, you know, there shouldn't be a lot of accolades, and obviously people don't kick up a lot of fuss for me because I am seventeen and four or whatever. But I mean, look, man, they kept Lomachenko, man, and I guess a lot of it is the strength of his resume. But they were on that dude's dick, man, keeping him in the in the ring magazine pound for pound for for a while when he was seventeen and two and even eighteen and three. You know what I mean? So. But, uh, I mean, you know, he's putting together a pretty good resume himself. And, and again, you know, a lot of it is strength of resume and who you lose to. He well, did be there. Huh? Like, I feel like part of it has to do with a lot of people don't watch guys at those lower, lower weights like that. You know what I mean? Well, he did fight William Foster the third. He did fight uh, Elijah Pierce. He did fight Abraham Nova. He did fight Jermaine Ortiz. So yeah, he's got Pierce, who's, well, like a top three ranking right now. Uh, he also fought. Uh, he also fought uh, uh, Jermaine Ortiz, right? Who's huge right now? Yeah, and he also fought uh, Abraham Nova, who's got a lot of buzz around him now too. You know, so I mean, he lost, the, he lost the guys. I mean, he beat Elijah Pierce, but he lost the guys who are like got. You know, I mean that credibility. No question about it. Plus, he had 240 uh, uh, amateur fights uh, in Uganda before he even fucking came over here. So I mean, it's uh, like there and losing to bums you're, you know what i mean like he's looking yeah at the top guys and, and i would implore people to you, you, you know to really rally around this guy just because you you you, you 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 know he's bringing something to the sport that exuberance and that infectious smile that same stuff that i, I brought up to Keyshawn davis or to shushu carrington or to these guys a lot and elijah pierce these guys that have a lot of charisma like he was in there and he really looked like he was enjoying himself like that's what made me a fan back in 1986 shout out to mookie wilson just a guy out there who looks like he's just out there, like living his best life. I'm having a ball, and I'm gonna soak this in and love it, man. I mean, he was piecing dude up, but he was smiling in between rounds, and he was having a good time. And he was like, "Hey, I'm in here, man. I'm having a fight. I'm putting on a great performance, and I'm not gonna fucking, I'm not gonna try to hide it. I'm enjoying myself here in in hostile environments because that was a very pro Ruben Via crowd, man. So I like how he touched on the fact that he like knew he was like winning the fight. But, like, if it didn't go his way based on the cards, it just, like, is what it is. You know what I mean? Well, he did win a unanimous decision. It would have been hard it, it, uh, it would have been hard to argue, man, that he didn't win, man. I don't know what judge could have had him. Uh, and, and, and he is the WBC uh, silver featherweight champion. So, I mean, he is holding, uh, uh, you, you know, a nice piece of a belt right there, man. And uh, and this is going to obviously open some doors for him, man, beating the WBC's number one guy. I would imagine if you look on there in a couple of weeks, man, on the page that I go to to check the rankings, you know, he is going to crack in somewhere, man, more than likely, without a doubt, the WBC. Right. I mean, just beat their number one ranked guy. I mean, how the hell do you not crack into their fucking rankings? I mean, something is wrong if he doesn't, man. Well, I mean, something's wrong in boxing. We know that. And he's one of those guys, man, that's just it's just hard not to root for him and hard not to like him, man. I mean, I was standing in front of my TV with every uppercut because he's 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 a guy that's been on my radar for a while, and I was just like, you know, I like this guy. You know what I mean? He's likable and he's fun to watch, and he kept the fight in the center of the ring, and he works from a lot of cool angles, and he throws a lot of body shots, and he throws a lot of nice little tight uppercuts, man. You know, I I, I really like what he's working with, man. And and you know, I, I you know, he's just got skills. He's got skills that I like. I know I brought up Devin Haney before when we were talking to him, but I kind of did the same thing when Ryan Garcia and him were fighting and Ryan, when I hit him with the last hook, I was up on my seat like, yeah. Ah, ow. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, man, shout out to, uh, uh, you know, I, I normally don't like to give away uh, uh, episodes, but at the time of this episode, is it is July, it is uh, Monday, July 22nd. So, Yesterday was the 21st, so coming up here on the 28th, a week from yesterday, uh, I'm going to be having on a welterweight that really gets me excited, a lot in the vein of uh, like Paul Williams, who we just have ha had on, a guy who I can't seem to find his proper height listed anywhere. I see him anywhere between 5'11 and a half and 6'2", which I guess will give me uh, 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 you, you know, a good jumping off point to really nail him down and ask him his own goddamn height. But, I mean, a guy that's going to be a real problem in the welterweight division 
And he sounds like he's really excited to come on and do our show, which makes me really excited because I think right now he's the welterweight to watch right now. Uh, uh, McFly himself, Freddie Rojas, man. And I, 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 I love the fact that those words are spilling out of my mouth. He will be coming on uh, next Sunday, man. He picked the day. But, uh, I'm, you know, I'm going with it, man. He's one of those welterweights that, that you know, that really gives me the Paul Williams vibes. Going to be a problem for dudes at welterweight, man. You know, with that height, with that reach. He's a southpaw. So shout out to Freddie Roas, man. If he does see this in the meantime, man, I'm happy as hell that you're coming on, man. And uh, I got my eye on you in that welterweight division, man. Big time. So, hey, man, I think we said all we could say about this episode. Shout out Suleiman Sagawa. Like and follow. Hit the notification bell. Find us on Facebook at Off The Couch Boxing. And, uh... And yeah, I mean, besides that, man, all I can say is shout out Gary Busey because I can go 15 seconds with anything. Yeah, and it, and people should know this too, man, because we really like to really let people know the character of these guys, man. Suleiman was kind enough to join us in a, a, or attempt to join us uh, a couple of nights ago when he was on his way home from the gym. He wasn't driving. He was in a car with some other people or whatever, and they did make a pit stop, and he attempted to, he, uh, attempted to tap into the podcast then. And I, you know, obviously like we're at the will, uh, and the mercy of the internet, the connection was not good. So we pulled the plug on it because we did want an interview like this. We wanted a good quality interview, audio and video good. So we said, look, man, like let's nail down a time when you're actually going to be home with a good stable internet connection, man. So your fans back in Uganda, your fans around the world can really, really, really see and hear everything clearly, man, you're coming off with, you know, the biggest win of your career, man. We want to do you right here, man. It means a lot to us to put out a good product out there too, man. And let me just say it again, Freddie Rojas Jr. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I, I'm not even sure if he even is a junior, but I thought that I read that, man. But Freddie <laughs> Rojas, man, I'm excited, man. Oh, I am excited. Hit him with the slogan. Yeah. So make sure, as Benji said, you stay tapped in, man. Uh, if you want the best boxing conversations, not always the intangibles. We're not going to argue X's and O's and give all kinds of analysis and breakdowns and statistical type shit, man. But we are going to chop it up with people on here and we are going to have a good time, man. And we are going to show you the lighter side and the fun side of a lot of these people from the fight game, man. That's what we're all about, man. Just guys on here that love boxing, chopping it up, man. So if you're into that kind of shit, man, stay tapped in with us, man. Come along for the ride, man. And if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.